Uh, hello and welcome to Bevy Basics. In this video I'll be setting up the basic Bevy environment uh, just so that I have a setting off point for future episodes. So we're going to start by uh, initiating, uh, initializing our cargo uh, workspace for Rust. So cargo in it. I'm starting inside a folder so that I can have things pre-compiled and ready to run so that I'm not spending ages compiling things. The first thing we're going to do is include bevy version 0.6.1 which is the most latest stable build into our project and then in our main file we will use bevy prelude and then just uh, wildcard include that and then app new to make a new app and then dot run to execute it. This is the simplest form that a bevy app comes in and will do absolutely nothing. Then we will add uh, plugins, default plugins. This will add the basic game functionality to our game. So in this case it adds a window and a game tick and all these basic systems like startup systems and whatnot. And that looks like this. Then from there, personally, uh, I would recommend in your TOML file, including this line here, which is profile.dev.packages.wildcard op level three. This will cause all your dependencies to be compiled in the highest optimization level. The main reason you wanna do this is that Bevy is quite slow in debug mode. Uh, but you don't want to be in release mode because that will turn off all your debug debugging tools and whatnot. So if you compile it in optimization level three, it will run significantly faster. Like we're talking max a hundred sprites versus max like a thousand uh, or tens of thousands of, of sprites. Like it's so much faster in op level three. So you want to do this here so that you're not waiting forever for your code to compile because once Bevy's compiled, it's done. And then it should run significantly faster. All right. Uh, other recommendations I make, I'm going to make for um, setting up your Bevy environment as like a good stepping off point is to include Bevy uh, Inspector GUI and the Bevy Editor Please, which you have to actually get from the GitHub because it's not currently on crate style as far as I'm aware. But doing this will let you include an editor as simply as going here and saying, use bevy editor. We'll just put the please in, because copilot. Um, and then going here and adding a plugin bevy editor. This will why did you not work? Did I not save this? Like why? Okay, now it's working. So um, yeah, this will add a editor to your Bevy game, which will greatly uh, improve your user experience. A note for this is that in its current form, uh, pressing E will open up the editor. It will crash if you don't spawn your own camera, even though it has pre-built in cameras for the editor. Um, mine just emits an error because I've patched it, but it will still crash when I change cameras because uh, it doesn't grab a camera by default for some reason. I'm not really sure why it does that. Uh, but what's great about the editor is that you can add uh, the, the default Bevy diagnostics like uh, frame time and entity count and the editor automatically will grab uh, onto your diagnostics and puts them into its own editor window uh, once the game opens up. Like I could either pop it out here and have it in the world anywhere or in here I can change one of these windows to being the diagnostics which will give me a frame count and entity count, which are the three cameras that it spawns, which don't work for some reason. Um, yep, and just quickly to set up the, um, just a, a quick example scene that I'll copy paste across, uh, just to wrap up this video. 
here. I'll go into more details about how to use all this uh, and how to add systems and stuff to Bevy uh, in a future video. I just want to quickly set up like an example scene. So basically I'm adding a startup system which run once at the beginning of the game. Like when it boots, it'll run start a startup system once and then uh, I am adding the cube move system which will run every frame. I've derived a unit struct called cube and derived component on it so that it can be used as a component. In our startup system, we grab a component and access to the materials and meshes assets, asset collections. Uh, I'm then getting a camera, repositioning the camera, making it look at the center and then spawning the camera, then spawning a cube in the middle and attaching the cube component to it. And then uh, in this function, I basically read the keyboard inputs and grab all cubes and their transforms. And then basically with the buttons that you press, changing the position of the cube respectively here. Uh, again, I'll go into more detail about how to make a system and the critical stuff in future episodes. But just quickly to show this off, we end up with a cube in the middle of our screen that when I press the corresponding keys, it moves. Like so. And I can also go into the editor here, go to like diagnostics, and you'll see that there are now five entities. That doesn't make any... Oh, because I spawned the camera. So yeah, you've got our camera because it hides its own, the... Um, and the cube here. Oh, that's probably terribly sounding. Um, yeah, the editor is brilliant because it has mouse picking and all sorts of stuff. And because we spawned a camera, we now get access to the default cameras, which I really have no idea why, um, why it doesn't work by default. But anyway. Yeah, so that's... that's Bevy in a nutshell. I will hopefully be making some videos soon talking about like entities and systems and how to settle this uh, and how to actually start building a game. But this video was just a quick one I put together to point out things like the optimization. There is other things you can do, such as if you put version. So. Uh, to speed up individual um, compile times, like uh, iterative compile times. You can include feature um, dynamic. I think that's, yeah. So you can include dynamic. I'm not showing up in this video because it seems a bit finicky in the fact that when I try to compile it, it literally just crashes saying it can't compile, di uh, compile dynamic lib or something. Uh, apparently, it's significantly faster on Linux, but quite uh, finicky on Windows. And because I'm on Windows, I it's worked on other projects, but this when I tried today, it just wasn't. So I've kind of given up on for this video at least. But uh, hopefully this is a good stepping off point. So like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos going deeper into Bevy. I hope to make a full like tutorial series of actually like going quite deep into Bevy. Because um, I quite enjoy the the um, engine and it works surprisingly well like there is very little complexity to it uh, but there are definitely some things that I have lined up like video ideas of things that I've learned after using it for pff, almost a year now actually maybe even over a year um, where I've gone like it's really unintuitive like there might be a really easy way to do it but I couldn't find anything in the documentation that explained how to do things like um uh it's something like something system uh exclusive system uh an exclusive system gives you world access as opposed to a system which only gives you access to um very specific things so if you don't actually know what you'll be needing from the world and therefore can't make a system you can get an exclusive system which would give you world access and you can pick your own Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one before I ramble this one to death. Uh, and also just make it 10 minutes long because, you know, YouTube and apparently 10 minutes is the length of a video that you want to make. <laughs>
Only because it was like 30 seconds off. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe.